Okay, so um, one of Queen's most famous songs is We Will Love You. And the song is about how it's about the futility of men, that they can try to do things, but they end up failing. He, end up, he end, ends up being a poor man. So the first stage is the playful boy. Here they say playing in the street going to be a big man. So they, they make a distinction between being male and being a man. So a boy is a male, he's not a man. And what we can see is something that a boy would do is playing in the street kicking the camera all over the place, that's how people amuse themselves before PlayStations. Mm. And um, so what we can infer from this is this behavior is not typical of being a man. So, okay, so, um, so we can infer that a man should not play, he should be serious and he should work. And then the second point from here is you've got blood on your face, you big disgrace which shows that men should be meticulous about how they look, they should be clean. And then, uh, the second verse talks about women as a young man and a hard man. Young, it, this talks about the physical appearance here, because hard means impervious to other people's attacks. So when you're physically strong, and young is when you're, you're uh, physical prowess. And then, this is quite important, it says you've got blood on your face, you so this shows an attitude towards killing, which is that war is kind of an execrable, bad thing, and it's cruel, which is very different from, for example, the World War One literature, where it said it was noble, valor, and gallant. Um, so then this bit, going to take on the world someday, it's not in a sort of colonial sense, it's in a kind of a businessman sense, I'm going to create a, a company and become a world wide famous. And so it shows a sense of ambition because it's gonna, as in going to, not I have. Um, and shouting is typically masculine because it's aggressive. And then I call this human detritus. Detritus just means the broken up remains of something. It gets a figurative sense because this man has been robbed by society. Now he's a poor man, an old man, dreaming with your eyes. And um, this bit saying, Somebody better put you back in your place. I mean, these characteristics, they should be fixed. They're not something you, should, you want to be. So you shouldn't be poor. You don't want to be pleading with your eyes. You don't want to be emotionally weak. You want to be stoic. And, yeah. and then uh, this is a poster for when the Queen went to Montreal. And uh, this is just focusing on the central image. Um, this image exposes many of the things which are the physical features of masculinity. For example, he doesn't have his shirt on, so you can see the muscularity, you can see his chest hair and other body hair. He has a mustache, and the way his head's tilted back all the way, it accentuates his Adam's apple, which is something which is more common in men. And um, also the fact that the light's coming down, it's white light reflecting off his face, and his neck and his shoulders, you can tell those are stage lights. And also, um, he's in a pose, which is like dancing. And all these pictures below and above, they're performing, which shows a sense of duty. They're not posing for a camera, smiling, they're working while they're photographed. Um, and also the way he's holding the um, rod, I don't know what it is. Um, it shows he's in control, because he's gripping it very firmly. And the last thing, his hair is always very well groomed. Um, he has it's very neat appearance. Also, the white trousers and the shoes they symbolize purity and cleanliness. And uh, these two images, um, they both have their legs apart, which the which is a masculine pose because of the obvious biological reason, but also because if you're standing like that, it's you're stable and can't be pushed over very easily, so you're impervious to the pressures of society. Or other people. Next. 
And also this one, again, it exposes, he's wearing a vest, it exposes the muscular atrium of his arm, and the vest is tight, it shows the physique, it shows the silhouette of his body. And the fact it's Superman. Yeah. Okay, and this is the text which is from the poster, and um, it contrives an image of masculinity which is like the muscular um, fit man. And this is what I mean, which is the opposite, just to emphasize my point. So the letters are bold, and that resembles the um, thick limb nature of men, because they're more muscular. The letters are upright, as opposed to being italics, because upright is like they're standing on the two feet, it shows independence, whereas italics, it makes it look like they're leaning, which shows dependency. Um, the letters are tall and narrow, as so that's like the physique of a fit man who's tall and more narrow as opposed to shorter and fat. And um, the letters are sharp edged. Like even the O's, O's are usually round, but here they're rectangular. And um, that's like the prominent jaw bones and the uh, shoulders, the very prominent, those kind of that shape. And as opposed to round, which resembles the um, round nature of the woman's body. And also, they're all in capitals, and it's for two reasons. It gives the the words the rectangular shape, for the same reason, well, yeah, so that it's like the body. But it also, it looks like shouting, because it's in capital letter, which is aggressive again, which is typically male. Um, and also, it's navy blue background, which is navy, it's a job where you have to be very organized and you have to follow orders, and it's physically difficult because you have to be very fit. And that's, those are virtues of men. Oh yeah, and just about that point that you have blood on your face, big disgrace. This song, Another One Bites the Dust, shows a different attitude. Because it says, another one bites the dust, that means another person died. But bites the dust is an idiom for dying. The use of idioms is quite informal and it shows kind of a lack of respect. And that's the reference to a person as one, but not in the formal sense. It's like making them seem like objects which you can just dispose of. And it also says other things like the fascination with guns, your bullets rip, um, how, long, how long can you stand the heat? It shows that men have to be able to, they have to be impervious, as I said. Um, and interestingly, it says there are plenty of ways you can hurt men. And these are all physical, bring him to the ground, you can beat him, you can cheat him. But then it says leave him, as in a girlfriend leaving a man in a relationship, which shows um, that men can seem emotional, which is not like the uh, pleading with your eyes bit in real world. Okay, so Um, the band that we're going to look at, which is Modern Rock, is Green Day, and I'm sure all of you have heard of it. If you haven't, it is an American punk rock band which was formed in 1987, and the current members of the band include Billy Joe Armstrong, Trey Cool, and Mike Durant. Alright, and so the most well known song is American Idiot, and I'm sure all of you have heard of it. Introducing the stereotype of Americans not being very smart, no offense to any Americans, and it infers that the band does not want to be part of the stereotype, they don't want to conform to this idea, they want to be their own person, which shows masculinity, you know, being able to stand up against the power. Um, the next one is the provoc provocative language use, such as swear words like fuck and faggot, which don't only really sound aggressive, but are very aggressive, and it seems that they're trying to use this language to evoke their masculinity. Well, it's a queen, they rarely swear. And um, the next is We're Not the Ones Who Are Meant to Follow, which um, 
screen, they seem to be victimized by the society, like we will rock you, while screen they are opposing it, fighting it. And so they don't want to follow it. They don't want to conform. Once again, they want to be leaders. What do characteristics of men mean like masculinity? And then for that's enough to argue introduces aggression. You know, any reason to fight and use and start an argument. It's it's you know, it's one of it's it goes hand in hand with masculinity, having aggression. And then um, I'm not part of a redneck agenda once again, there's a stereotype of a redneck being conservative and not educated that well. And it's also juxtaposing um, faggot, because they're kind of contrasting the against the modern. And I think that the band is more image conscientious because it wants to be part of this ever-changing society, you know, being more modern and want to go with it. Instead of Queen who are kind of this, you know, when you think of masculine, you get Freddie Mercury or the whole band. And then media is, plays a very important role because it basically portrays what masculinity is, you know, you can depict it as a big strong man. And so they use words such as television, media, and information age to show how important it is. Next one. Yes. All right, next is the band poster from 2006. And we're just going to take a look at how this portrays masculinity. And first of all, the posture of Trey Quartz, very provoking. His eyes are wide, you know, he's kind of a little bit more forward, ready to take on a fight, you know, very aggressive. And then, whilst the other two are more laid back, but their eye contact is very serious. You know, they're ready to be taken seriously. Um, yeah, it, and, well, they're obviously less provocative and angry looking. And then the title is Clear to See It's White, and it's, the font itself is very masculine because it's not cursive, it's very detached. And then it's slightly, it looks like it's been spray painted on, and spray paint is associated with vandalism. Which is once again a type of rebellion. And rebellion, you can see, is repeated throughout the whole poster. Like with the color in the background, the orange and the red, it's like fire, no fighting power, you know, set things on fire, let's burn it down. <laughs> and then the front man, it kind of makes a twist on the stereotypical front singer because he's wearing eyeliner or guy liner, as some people call it, which is quite androgynous and it makes you question is this very masculine? But then again, the whole black and white portrait does make it look very rock and roll. Unlike Queen, which is, you know, very simple and very effective. And you know, I just had them when they are playing their instruments, well, this, this is more simple. Like simple postures. And yeah, like I said before, it's very painted, it's very messy, it's unfinished. You know, it's not perfect, like a feminist. After analyzing both the band images and lyrics of each band throughout the ages, we concluded that um, Queen's image is more physically fit with you know, the vests and have, have a more serious attitude whilst they're playing the instruments, as you can see how focused they are. And they have ambition, maybe even arrogance, and they're very clean and well groomed. Um, they're also um, very macho, and like Sam suggested before, that they they show that an image of war is terrible, however, can contradict that and another one bites the dust. Whilst Green Day is more modern and image conscientious and provocative and also rebellious, and of course, like a little hint of androgynous. And, um, but then the trait which both of them share is the aggressiveness, whether it's physical or emotional. And so I, I think that just proves that aggression and masculinity will always be associated with one another.